Good morning, tubers, and it is time to test some of Battery Hookup's Nickel Fuse. Now this, I've got the five piece stuff, it is $3 per foot, and I've got approximately 100 feet here, so I've got a little bit to play with. Now the plan is, um, I'm gonna use my eye charger. I'm just charging the battery up for the spot welder at the moment. I'm gonna use the eye charger. I'm gonna do a regenerative discharge off this little battery. We're gonna build this little battery out. Um, now my plan is I'm actually, I've gone from 80p to 160p to 200p battery. So this one here is going to be hopefully 5p across and then 5p across to make my 200p battery like that. So before I actually went through that stage, I thought I'd start cutting some up and, and playing with it and destroying it as it turns out. And also working out amp draw and things like that. So I'm gonna build this little battery. I'm gonna grab my little fur, Fleur thermal camera. I'm gonna do some time lapses and stuff and see heat build up and things like that. Um, and then if I get any heat, I'm gonna try and solve that heat issue by adding more copper or building out a bus bar or something like that. Uh, now I got a little, little Anderson plug here. No, what's that, XT60? So I can just solder those ends onto the copper. I don't know, onto the nickel rather. I don't know how I'm gonna do it in the end, but I am going to have to do it in an arrangement that suits all my other batteries where I can just plug and play it into my battery bank. So that's a consideration for me. We're gonna use, we're gonna take this opportunity to run some settings on the K-World. We're gonna start a little bit lower and then turn them up and see what settings work best for this nickel strip. Let's get this started. First, we've got to drain a bit of power. I'm actually charging this battery up so I can get a little bit of bit of headspace in those batteries there to do the regen discharge. We'll cut some of this up and have a quick look. We'll go straight for the, the 20p pack first. Grab a spot welder. Let's clear some space so it's a little bit safer first. All set up. We've got the K weld there. We're going to set it to 20 joules first. Spot on 20 joules and we'll see how that spot welds. And we'll put it into auto mode. And we'll just tack one on. I don't know where my magnets have gone, but we'll spot weld this on. It's one. Now I'll just do all of these at 20 joules. Not applying too much pressure. Right here, I'll do the next ones at say 22 and a half joules. So we've got 22.5. Now I'm only gonna do single spot welds for now because I wanna see if there's any heat build up. Bit of a spark there, maybe I could apply a little bit more pressure. Now I'll do 25 joules. Looks like I've damaged that one putting it on handling. Then we go 30, oh no, 24, uh, 27 and a half, maybe. There we go, 27 and a half. And then we go 30 joules. And we'll see if there's any heat build up in that at all. Or if there's any noticeable heat difference. There we go, that 30 seemed like a much more positive um, spot weld. I did notice it moved a little bit getting towards the end there. That's the second side done. Now that only took about two minutes to do all those spot welds and I've done four on each. And I've taken that back down to 25 joules. And I think it really comes out, really comes out well. Now I was rushing it a little bit and I could have done a little bit neater. 
but this is this is a realistic test and I don't want to take too much time with it and we've only got the two spot welds rather than four on that side now I know there's going to be a disparity between the two uh, the polarities on the cell but this is just a rough test we're going to crack it out and see what we can come up with let's keep going with this It took a few minutes put some decent solder joints there ideally i should have done that before i put the nickel on but look it'll work for now i reckon it's a bit dirty because i did that a few times i should have put some more um flux on it that side looks a bit better but it's fit for purpose i reckon right we've got it on a, on, a, on a tile here nice thick tile so we'll plug this in it's already charged it's saying 4.16 volts so we'll proceed to actually doing a discharge test We have got 57 degrees on the positive terminal going into the battery. It has been running now for 25 minutes doing this test. We have got, uh, what, 13 amp hours out of the battery? And we're drawing about 30 amps. So now to touch, those batteries are nice and warm. And the nickel strip uh, is warm, but it's not, not as warm as the actual cells themselves. Some things I've done wrong, I haven't coated the nickel strip, so it's probably not going to be getting an accurate reading off that. So I may have to do, redo that test. But for now, this is just a little update showing you how long it's been going for and how well it's working. Or not working. I'm not sure how to quantify that. But let's continue testing and see what we come up with. Okay, so we're about 33 minutes in now, and I'm going to pull the plug on the test. Uh, what I've done is I've got some um, tape, electrical tape, and then covered the nickel strip on this side to try and give it a better, or uh, well, not a reflective surface. And you can definitely see the heat buildup around the negative terminal there. Now the whole cell itself, that is fairly good and warm. That is, that's really hot now, now that I've taken off that that shining surface so to speak the cells are definitely warm you can see them they're around 50 degrees so that's not good and we flip it over onto the other side now this is the positive side and the reflective surfaces there is giving us a false indication and also i think it is allowing the heat to dissipate fairly easily but placing my hand on that there is definitely some heat build up on that what we're going to try and do now is see if we can move the heat away from here and spread it over the whole pack a little bit and see if we can balance out the draw coming from this and increase the amp rating of this nickel strip which is rated at 20 amps i'm just going to get another piece of nickel strip place it on and then see what we come up with okay so we've got the new nickel strip added onto that so i've just used some 0.15 millimeter nickel strip added it on I think I could have done some solder underneath there to help out that as well, but for now that'll that'll be okay, I think. Now what I'll do is I'll cover that in electrical tape as well, like I did the other side, and then we can get it charged back up and run another quick test. After recharging the cells, we'll jump straight back into discharging these cells again. And as you can see, the heat buildup is quite rapid within the cells themselves. And at this point, I'm thinking it's not a valid test and I need to step this up a little bit. But we'll proceed on and see what we come up with. Look at those results. We've got about 66 degrees, which 
which is not looking good. Those cells are mighty hot and actually a cause for concern, I would say. I think all of this is just locking the heat in. Let's peel it off so it can cool down a bit quicker. Had I have known that that was going to get so hot, I would never have actually done that test. But it's done now, so can't, disre can't disregard the results. Righty, YouTubers, I got a few hours into this quick video. Um, so I'm going to sort of chop its head off and say, righty, it's time for the community to like the comment section up below. Um, tell me what I'm doing wrong. Tell me what I'm doing, what I should be doing better. I really don't know how to test this. This is just sort of what I hacked together, what I had. I thought throwing a 30 amp uh, discharge on it would be something that would, I don't know, have more benefit, uh, what do you call it? Um, I thought that throwing a 30 amp load onto it would have a more clear cut answer. Um, I was hoping to see Without the extra nickel strip on it, I was hoping to see it just really hot up one end and then with the nickel strip on it, the heat would be sort of across the entire battery. But that wasn't the case, whether it was the way I was filming it, the quality of the little thermal camera. Um, in case anybody wants to know, it's just a little thermal camera that plugs into the bottom of my iPhone, a uh, little flare link below. Um, Similarly, if you actually do want to buy any of this nickel, don't forget to use the 10% discount code, Powerwolves with a capital P. Um, and I think next, I'm willing, I'm willing to take this to wherever it needs to go. Anybody wants to um, give me some reasonable suggestions on how to test it. What I think I'll do next is grab an ADP pack and build that up very quickly. Um, same sort of format, I'm not going to put too much effort in. Uh, cut down some, I've only got the 5P, I'll just cut it down so it's 4P, build out a pack and then make it in such a way that I can just do a, a hot swappable pack for my batteries uh, because this one is of low quality so I need to pull that out and test that anyway so it'd be good to have a replacement there for it. Uh, like I said before, like the comment section up, tell me how to test this better if you want something specific tested let me know, we'll get after it, get that done. Tubers, thank you very much for tuning in. If you've made it this far, smash that like button, leave a comment below, and subscribe if you already haven't. And I'll see you on the next one. I missed.